Good evening everybody, thank you very much for joining in. This is 70th in the series where we are going to speak about a topic which is on IFRS 7. We all know that the world is changing at a very fast pace and basically we are very soon moving towards IFRS. Well, most of the Indian, co Indian corporates are still making their financials as per Indian camp. Uh, very known, uh, in fact, Indian information technology industry is, is, making, their, is making their financials on, on US GAAP and now things are shifting toward IFRS. That's a separate fact that today we're going to speak about IFRS and uh, maybe one month down the line all the principles of the IFRS is going to get changed because the continuous research and development is happening at IFRS front and whatsoever applicable today or may or might not get applicable after a period of time. So IFRS is also changing at a very fast pace. From this side, I am Rahul Magan, working as a corporate treasurer in EHS Services India, which is an Indian counterpart of a US NASDAQ district firm, EHS Service Holding INC. At the same time, I am also acting as a proprietary trader, business consultant, virtual treasurer, and foreign exchange trader to various companies in India, predominantly in Singapore. You are most welcome to join my foreign exchange group, which is Foreign Exchange Every Thinkers on LinkedIn, which have 62 million LinkedIn networking and close to 2,700 fixed members. You're welcome to see my videos on YouTube, which is roughly 70, 70 videos, over 5,500 views, and almost 130 subscribers. A Facebook page, which is Foreign Exchange Every Thinkers. And you're also welcome to join my WhatsApp group, recently formed WhatsApp group, which is Every Thinkers. So I'm running my brand, which is Foreign Exchange Every Thinkers. In nutshell, I'm going to reiterate the fact that we're going to speak about a topic which is IFRS 7. IFRS 7 is, is all about financial the disclosures of financial instrument. It speaks about the various disclosures we have in, in financial instrument. Now, these I'm going to touch a critical part of IFRS 7 because you can have various types of disclosures. IFRS 7 speaks about qualitative disclosures, it speaks about quantitative disclosures. It speaks about disclosures of each and every asset and liability that the corporate have in the book and the impact of that asset, asset, asset and liability the corporate is going to see in the books. Now, basically IFRS 7 speaks about the disclosures of the various types of risk a corporate would have in the books. Now, these risks IFRS 7 would divide into three parts. And let me assure you, even US GAAP and IS, which is Indian Accounting Standard, they are not going to speak about that risk. It is only IFRS 7 which speak about that risk. Now, IFRS 7 say the financial instrument disclosure, basically the risk could be categorized into three parts. One is the liquidity risk, another is the market risk, third is the credit risk. Now, these market risks would further categorize into three parts, which is interest rate risk, currency risk, and other price risk. Now, I find this someone is saying, take an example of liquidity risk. They are saying you are holding a certain amount of foreign, foreign exchange asset and liabilities, local currency asset and liabilities or maybe mix of that. Now liquidity risk refers to a fact that once you may or might not find a good amount of liquidity in the system to price that. Now this has this we are going to link with two beautiful concepts in IFRS which is IFRS 13 and IFRS 9 which is the level of hierarchy you have like in US GAAP, FS157 and all. You have L1, L2 and L3. So basically liquidity risk talk about two things. One, a redemption part of it and secondly, the pricing part of it. So liquidity risk will tell you that whether using L1, L2 or L3. L1 refers to mark to market. Let me write here. L1 refers to mark to market mark to matrix and L3 refers to mark to model L1 refers to, to the fact that when 100% is market which is known as observable data this refers to a fact that say 60% market and 40% yours your own assumptions your own data your own model and this refers to the fact that when 100% is yours. Market risk is divided into three parts, which is interest rate risk, currency risk, and other price risk. Other price risk refers to all the risk which does not pertain to or do not pertain to interest rate risk and currency risk. Interest rate risk we know all about. If you have a foreign currency or certain liability, then you if you have a foreign currency or certain liability, then you are subject to foreign currency fluctuation. And that foreign currency fluctuation you can hedge using either dollarization swap or reverse dollarization swap. Dollarization swap refers to a fact that when you convert INR liability into foreign currency or set and you when you convert 
Ayana denominated asset and liability into foreign currency denominated asset and liability. Reverse dollarization swap refers to a fact that when you convert the foreign currency asset and liability into Ayana denominated asset and liability. So IFRS 7 speaks about that disclosure, your interest rate risk. Second is the currency risk, not to mention the currency risk, various derivatives you have in the currency, forward contract, option contract, swaps contract and all these kind of instruments which companies are taking to hedge their receivables, payables, loans and advances and sometimes securities also. So that IFRS 7 is going to speak about. Third is the other price risk. Other price risk, I reiterate, is nothing but a risk which is besides your currency and interest rate risk. The third talks about credit. Third about credit review. Credit risk. Credit, credit risk. Credit risk refers to a risk which pertains to a credit. Specifically speaking, it speaks about two things, which is total return swap and asset swap. Total return swap and asset swap. So in nutshell, IFRS 7 to cut the short. IFRS 7, the critical or the, or the key part of IFRS 7 is to speak about both all kind of disclosures, whether it's a quantitative disclosure or a qualitative disclosure. In both kind of disclosure, IFRS 7 takes about three kind of risk. One is known as liquidity risk, market risk and credit rate risk. Market risk is spoke about interest rate risk, currency risk, other price risk. On the other hand, credit risk speaks about total return swap or asset swap. Although IFRS 7 is silent, that which kind of swap you are going to use for your asset swap but still majority of the times we have found that companies are using that. Please be note that this so called total return swap and asset swap these both kind of risks the companies are using to hedge outside India because both of them are not allowed in India. One more you can add which is known as CDS which is credit default swap. So this is nothing but a small introduction about IFRS 7 that what are the three critical risks IFRS 7 speaks about. The next video we are going to speak in detail what are the various instruments IFRS 7 has approved to tackle all these kind of risks. You are most welcome to give me a call at uh, say 9198992429789. You are welcome to call to email me at rahulmagan8 at the rate gmail.com. Thank you very much and thanks for your time.